Do you remember the homecoming games from high school? Everybody's really excited to come home and see people that they know and reminisce about old times. The reality is some of those old times get better as time goes by, but there really is something fun about coming home and talking to people who know you and care about you. You know, and maybe your family was like that. You love coming home to the familiar, where people love you unconditionally despite your shortcomings. We're concluding our, our study on idols. You have probably had the opportunity to take an honest look at your life, at your shortcomings, at your sin. We want to conclude this Bible study by looking at grace, God's unmerited favor toward us. Because God's answer to our sin is always grace. Paul Tripp has a great quote about grace. He says that God's grace is the most powerful force in the universe because it reaches you where you are and takes you where God wants you to be. Grace has the power to change you at the core, at your heart. You know, the more we are aware of our own sin, the more we appreciate grace. So that's why we're gonna end this study by setting our gaze on God's grace. We're gonna look at the prophet Jeremiah and what he says. Jeremiah 3, 12 through 15. This is what the Lord says, O Israel, my faithless people. Come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt, admit that you have rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against him by worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you have refused to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, have spoken. Return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town and two from that family, from wherever you are scattered. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Twice in this passage, God tells us to come home. I love that picture. We have a God who loves us, who's merciful. He describes himself as our father, and he tells us to come home. Now make no mistake about it, he knows who we are, he knows what we're like. In this passage, he has said that we are a faithless people, we are wayward children, yet this God loves us unconditionally and calls us to come home, to be part of his family. In Psalm 103.8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. We are un totally undeserving of this kind of grace, and yet he gives it to us anyway. And he tells us what he wants us to do. He wants us to acknowledge our guilt. He wants us to quit our hiding. He wants us to lay down our pride, get rid of our excuses, admit that we have sinned and that our sin against, is against the Lord. Hopefully each week during the cleanse, you've really had an opportunity to do that. Because God does not want us to live in guilt and shame. He doesn't want us to feel powerless over envy or bitterness or our own fears and selfishness. He wants us to come home to him. In verse 14 of this passage, the Lord tells his wayward children to come home to him because he is their master. That is so important for us to remember. We need to acknowledge our guilt and our shame, but we need to admit that God is our master. We need to submit to his lordship in our life. We need to admit that he is God and we are not. What God says is good is good, and what he says is sin is sin. We no longer live for ourselves. We have been bought with a price and he decides how we are to live. So when we acknowledge our guilt and we confess our sin, how does God respond? Again, we look at this passage and we see this incredible response of God. He says he is not going to stay angry, but that he is going to be merciful. And then it says he's going to bring us back from where we have scattered. And I just love that word picture of bringing us back from where we have scattered. Because if we're honest, we'll admit that we have all run from God. We have all scattered. We run after material things. We envy what others people have. Ha have. We um, are overcome by our own bitter bitterness or we run away in fear. And this verse is saying that God wants us to bring us back from where we have been scattered. And then the verse 15, it says he's gonna do something else that I think is just a beautiful picture. In verse 15, it says that he's going to bring us shepherds that are gonna guide us in knowledge and truth. So God doesn't leave us alone. He has given us his word, the Bible. He has given us the church for support and for encouragement. And most of all, he has given us the Holy Spirit who guides us, can fix us, and teaches us. The power that we need to overcome the sin that we struggle with comes directly from God. The more we understand grace and experience that grace, the more we are changed. 
R.C. Sproul has a great quote about this. He says, the more we understand how kind God has been to us, the more we are overcome by his mercy, the more we are inclined to love him and to serve him. One day, our struggle with sin is going to be over. But until that day, listen to what Jeremiah also says. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember the sins. Until that day, we can rest in the fact that we can experience God's grace today and for the, in the days that come. Because God's grace not only gives us eternal salvation, but it transforms us today. So rest, rejoice, and come home.